Good afternoon, console fans. Thank you for joining us on this beautiful Memorial Day. Tom Battinger joined here by Ryan Agro Bailey. We're going to get a little aggro, especially after that last one. 9 0 and 10 for Vaporish? He, dude's a beast. Rivals the best team on console right now. I don't think there's any doubt about it. This guy, v Vaporish Coast, is, is really exciting. Part of me is kind of kind of waiting to see if he's going to make that transition from console to PC because this guy's getting scarier and scarier. May, maybe. I mean, the, the guy can, can really play, but definitely like it just fits well with that rival roster. Yeah. They play well around him because Vaporish does tend to get a little over aggressive at times. Rival seems prepared for that whenever they need to be. Now, as we transition into uh, North America, we're going to take a look at another star hunter, Michael Checo. Star might be a strong word for him, but he's certainly been a very popular player throughout the league. Very excited to see him get a second chance. So let's jump into picks and bans right away. The North American team's Fable GG versus Flashpoint. Both these teams trying to catch up to Astral Authority and elevate the two teams that represent in North America this last week's console land. And both these teams have a lot of talent on them. Michael Checo is a great, a great mm -hmm. point on one side because he ha just kind of has always been right on the cusp of being that star in the ADC role. A lot of talk about him in the scene. Everyone says he's very good mm -hmm. and then never really put it together in the actual competitive play. I'm excited to see if he's able to do it this time around. One thing I've always liked about Checo's play as the band phase is over is the fact that he's always been willing to play a little bit, uh, play the different stuff. Oh, and, yeah. and I think that that is very important in, se in season five to at least have the willingness to explore the other options. You and I usually butt heads, but we can both agree that there is some merit to exploring the bigger options. Sure. Fable, with the first pick, go for the Cucullin. After three Warriors are banned, Raven, Achilles, and the Odin. Hmm. And the Dodge, you can be banned as well. Option over to FP. Now, Guan Yu is still available here. Guan, this is the, the live patch. So, Guan mm -hmm. and Axe Ball both pretty strong. Now, Guan didn't see a whole lot of success in the last set in Europe, but that's because they were playing up against Rival. I don't sure. expect any exactly. pick to have a whole lot of success there, specifically in that region. But an early RDO pick here for Flashpoint is pretty surprising to me. This is a god that has good counter matchups. I like picking her into gods that really depend on using their mobility a lot. You know, the tier, the mm -hmm. Susano gods that really get messed with when they get crippled. But overall, I, I don't think RDO is first pickable right now. I'm with you on that, Poseidon here for Fable. I do like the RDO because I think it dissuades the Guan Yu. It doesn't completely counter it, but Guan in those team fights with his full passive wants to heal and then dash to get that heal up more often. Sure. Not gonna be able to dash there. Not a direct counter, but something that can limit his effectiveness. Well, it's also good against Guan Yu in lane because you could easily interrupt that Talu Assault with the mm -hmm. bear stun. So uh, maybe it is a kind of dissuader yeah. overall, but why dissuade the enemy team from picking it when you could just pick it yourself? I mean, the the, the actual answer to that is maybe they haven't practiced with it. Sure. doesn't necessarily fit into the composition. Guan Yu's not a one-size-fits-all god like Kakulin, for example. You definitely have to play a certain way around him, no? No, I mean, you want longer team fights overall, but I, in my mind, Guan's so strong right now that I would plug mm -hmm. and play him wherever. I think he is kind of just, you're, you're able to put him wherever you need him right now. I think he can viably jungle, support, or play solo lane right now. So it, I'm surprised that we're through the first three picks and we haven't seen any of it, especially with the Odin band away early yeah. by Flashpoint. Uh, the only other thing I can think of is it's been so long since Guan has been relevant that some of these players might not actually have him in their wheelhouse. Maybe. Pick it up. Second round of bans go through. No Herc, no Discordia, no Athena, no Sylvanas. Giannis will be the mid lane of choice for FP, and Fable will start their selection with a Guardian of Fafnir. A little scary to pick Giannis into the Poseidon. Poseidon can shut down Giannis fairly easily with that Whirlpool, but as long as Giannis is positioning well, you could use through space and time to guarantee yourself going through a portal because you can just kind of headbutt the wall as you're channeling your <laughs> ultimate. It'll pull you through the portal even when getting crippled. And there it is. <laughs> Last pick. Guan Yu, interesting. So no Hunter here for Fable. No. No Hunter could be Guan ADC. <laughs> I think this is Fable uh, getting down to their last pick and just going, wait, they didn't pick or ban Guan? Okay. I know we don't have a Hunter, but let's just pick it. All right, well, I was just saying that I would put Guan just about anywhere. I don't think I would put him in ADC necessarily. I still think that it's better to put him in the roles where he excels the jungle, the solo, and the support. You are probably excited because Guan is just good enough no, right now. No, I'm not that dumb. Okay, I mean, you <laughs> you see anything that isn't traditional and usually you're like all about it. It's got to fit. And the, that's the thing, is that there is no method to this madness. I don't necessarily, I think you go Poseidon Hunter here. Yeah, I completely agree with you. I completely agree with you. I mean, Fafnir as well, an interesting selection overall, I'd say. All right, all right, all right. We figured it out. There is a technical difficulty. So Guan Yu is actually on 
Flashpoint's team, and Jing Wei is on Fable's oh, team. Oh, okay. That now makes this a lot draft more sense. makes a lot more sense. Yes. And you're going to see the uh, the Guan Yu either in the jungle. No, the Guan Yu is going to likely be supporter solo yep. because of Ardio. So, yeah, okay. Let's Much just better. get into this one. Both of us like these drafts a little bit better, oh, I yeah. think. Fable and FP should have a very interesting matchup. Uh, for Fable, I'm looking at Mr. Teep. This guy is really who I'm staring at, this mid lane Poseidon. Certainly something that can can work out here. And you mentioned the Poseidon Giannis matchup, and this one is very interesting because I feel like usually when when you got counter matchups and things like that, it, the math has already been done. When it comes to this matchup between the Sylvanas and the Giannis, this is the difference between practice and theory i think in theory obviously the cripple shuts down the Giannis. but in proper practice a well-played Giannis can completely negate the advantage that the poseidon has oh easily i mean like i said you can just headbutt the walls as you're trying to go through them with, with through space and time the cripple won't really affect you you whirlpool has a very long deploy time yeah. before it'll actually begin to tick you aren't crippled until it ticks so you can easily get through walls but i do think that if Fable is playing around the how the Giannis is going to play around the Poseidon, uh, you can kind of mitigate a lot of that. You know, you're just waiting to use Whirlpool until the Ratatoskr alt lands or the stun lands or even the slow to keep Pandemid away from a wall. I think all of those are, are viable options r to try and shut down this Giannis. Delny will be in that short lane against... Uh the artist formerly known as Nickwit, Ryan Jarman playing on the uh, Kakalan. And with Delny on the on the guy with the Tal of Assault, Ryan can interrupt that. He can. No, no, he cannot. I'm sorry. He can really doesn't have an option to interrupt that. Knock up immune during Talu Assault, so not even the ultimate will really do for uh, for the Kakalan. So Delny's gonna have a pretty decent time in this lane, I think. I mean I I haven't Doesn't seen the a whole transform lot of push stun first? Isn't that gonna interrupt? It, do, it does have a small interrupt window, but you only have that while you're transformed, yeah. right? Like, you're, you're not getting that all the time. And Delny, like right now, is just not that worried about it overall. Does cancel the Talu Assault. Thanks, Ryan Jarman, for lending the, the broadcast a hand. Thanks, guys. Right there. But <laughs> Delny still, and this is one of the reasons why Guan Yu, it's not just the passive change. It has gotten a lot stronger since the patch is that even when his Talu Assault gets interrupted, now he has that cleave auto attack on that third swing. So... Like right now, when Ryan Jarman doesn't have that transform available, Delny can push pretty easily overall. But even when in that transformation, Ryan Jarman can't c completely shut down that Guan Yu clear. That auto attack cleave is going to really help Guan. Delny trying to keep himself at bay. Still dealing with this on the on the wrong side of this combat, but this is to be expected. Kakalin is the lane bully. Guan should come into his stride in a couple of levels once he gets that, specifically once he gets that heal online. Exactly. Now, Guan Yu does have some anti-heal there with the one. His bro in a lot of trouble. Has to use the beads and oh, still wow. just able to escape with one HP. Jumpa did a nice job of blocking that d dash to mm -hmm. make sure the J-Pro uh, couldn't stay quite as safe as he wanted to there. As I was saying, Kakalin does have the innate anti-heal on the one, and that will help him in the lane against Guan Yu. But once Downey maxes out Talo Assault, this really should be Guan Yu feeling pretty comfortable in this lane, and it's really difficult to box up against Guan Yu when you can't consistently interrupt that Talu Assault. It's kind of nice as well on Ryan Jarman's side with the anti-heal where Delny on the Guan Yu, this character is much less about big heals and more about frequent small heals. So that anti-heal is actually going to hurt a little bit more, I would reckon, because you're healing for such a little amount anyway that you're not getting really what you want if you're going to get anti-healed. Basically trying to heal for 300 a pop whenever you it gets to 150, then your passive is stacked. That doubles the heal up to 300. Now, that does mean that it's going to be a little bit before Delny's getting that big of a heal. Every single time he uses Conviction, you have to have it maxed out. And in the early game, you're right, it is a very, very small heal in the early stages. But as long as you're consistently keeping that passive up, which is much easier to do these days because that passive change, which is why it's so impactful for Guan Yu, it, your effectiveness really goes through the roof, roof pretty quickly. Left side matchup, a little bit different. We've got the Crit Hunter Jing Wei paired up with the Guardian that's going to increase her basic attack speed. And then we've got Hachiman, sort of the jack of all trades here. Useful at all points in the game. Perhaps not number one, though, at any point. No, I mean, Hachi is just a very safe hunter pick overall. And Michael Checo, if he gets a big lead, can try and solo down Cyprexa. But, it, you know, if it's a kind of a wash in lane, I think Cyprexa is probably going to be pretty happy 
about that. You expect Jingwei to bring a little bit more to the late game team fight just because of that crit uh, uh -oh. being in the explosive bolts. Jump is here on the left hand side. Cyprexa already used the jump. There's the Fafnir player jumping on away. Jumpa trying to help out, but the knock up from the rat's good. Fafnir is going to try and find a stun. Won't do it. Cyprexa just looking for some basic attack damage. Stun is good on the Mac Coys, and actually it will be big. First blood for J Pro. Great counter gank there by the Ratatoskar. Well timed. Let's jump on Panda, or excuse me, and Matt Coys and Michael Checo come really far down the lane, making it much, much harder for them to escape easily. RDO does have the mobility in the dash, but it's easily interrupted. Well done there by Fable to get the first blood. Yeah, it was just a great job pulling back efficiently, allowing that counter gank to really flourish. Sprint really critical in that situation as well to give them the extra movement speed they need to pull back towards that tower. Also immune the slow from the Nemesis ult. And the, the sprint in the early game, trying to save that for when Nemesis shows up is really, really, really critical. Sometimes we even see soul laners pick up sprint instead of teleport mm -hmm. in the early game at level one, just because it's so critical to get you away from Nem. Nem does a lot of really great stuff. The prot shred, the damage on the ultimate, all that is great, but she really relies on the slows in the kit. No hard CC there for her and sprint immunes all of that in that situation for Fafnir. Not a, not just that, I also like the uh, I like the sprint on the side of Nemesis as well. Late game when that turns into the super sprint. I mean, Nemesis is thought of as an ability-based character these days, but that passive is no joke. You're talking 5% power swing every hit, stacks up to 20%. Those basic attacks really start to swing in the late game. They really do, and it allow, it, her chase potential is already so good with, with a sprint, without a sprint, yeah. because of the slows and that kind of stuff. When you add in a sprint, take away that uh, in hand basic attack penalty, it, she gets a lot, lot harder to peel away. And that's why we see sometimes Nemesis players go for the Hazen Katana, yeah. the Stone Cutting Sword, that kind of build. I, I think that could be a good matchup here in particular because it's difficult for anyone from Faithful GG to get away reliably from that. I'm looking at the Ratatoskar, you can chase him down through the dashes, the Poseidon, you can chase down pretty easily as well. The Kakulin can't really get away from you at all. I wouldn't mind seeing that from Jumpa. Ryan Jarman. Goes down in the hand of Jumpa one more time on the right-hand side. And, yeah, th this is the beautiful thing I think about Nemesis, what makes her very powerful, besides all of the obvious numbers, is uh, her ability to be flexible. You're going to come in and, like, want to build into, uh, whether it's the Jotuns or the Crusher, you're going to build Maze, Heart Seeker, right? Or... If, if the right attacker goes tanky, that's what I think we see the basic attack build into the chin side, perhaps, right? Adapting builds her crit. I mean, there's so many different approaches to the nemesis that I think are all appropriate. And most gods don't really have playstyle options like that. J-Pro is already trying to make an adjustment against the nemesis. Goes second item yep. winged blade. Now, this really cuts his damage by a large margin. I mean, second item is usually the, the key power spike for assassins right now. The, the crushers, the Jotun's wrath, the transcendence even for some junglers. Those are all really, really strong damage items. And winged blade is cheap, so it's not that bad. and does give him a big boost of health, but... Overall, I still think I'd like to see J-Pro go for a damage item first, then pick up the Winged Blade. The Winged is really, really good mm -hmm. against the Nemesis. It's good against the Giannis as well. Threshold's an incredibly uh, strong slow. Delny's got a slow on the Oops. ultimate and the two as well. J-Pro's going to go aggressive, looking for the dual lane gank. Chases out the ultimate from the Hunter. Matt Coy is going to try and get away here. Successful dash from Cyprexa. Michael Checo able to exit. Jump us lurking, though. Doesn't have blink. Keep in mind, he does have the beads. But... The Fafnir, he's going to find the ultimate, get surrounded, and get pounded. Jumpa puts Fafnir on the ground. Taste that one, buddy. No sprint that time will save you from a Nemesis ultimate. Just too far forward there from Fable. The, the exact same story that happened to Flashpoint for the first blood, right? They chase a kill too deep down the enemy tower line. They don't get anything from it. And then the counter gank comes in and ends up proving fruitful. And, that, and the Giannis lends itself to that very, very well, as does the Ratatoskar mm -hmm. on the other side. That time the Giannis ultimate wasn't needed, but that's something that Fable needs to keep in mind if that happens again, is that Giannis can turn that fight very easily. Here comes J Pro. He's looking for, was looking for Panda, then for Jumpa. As soon as Delany starts to make the rotation, the jungler walks away. J Pro going the Winged Blade's first item. He, here's my thought process. If J Pro is going to stay in the middle lane, I don't mind it. Because that Kraken, even with the Warlock Staff start, that Kraken does enough damage that J Pro just has to be set up, man. Comes in with the ultimate, and that can make everything sort of happen, right? He doesn't need that damage right away if he focuses on the mid lane. But watching him go over to that left side, 
he needs that damage, and that's hurting him. Yeah, that's a great point. I think that you can kind of play setup man for, for Mr. Teep right now because Giannis is going to be so squishy yeah. to that crack. And I th but the dual lane, I mean, Jingwei Fafnir don't really do that much damage. I mean, this is the that is the maximum damage combo that they can do right <laughs> yeah. there. And it did solid numbers. I mean, brought Checo down to two-thirds HP. But is J-Pro going to be able to do that remaining two-thirds without another damage item besides the Acorn? Mm -hmm. uh, I doubt it. And look, he's building into a hybrid item. This is likely to be an Anchile. I, I Again, this is not... It's not the build, it's the decision-making around the build. If you want to go this defensive option, that's fine, but you, I, I need to see him in this middle lane because Teep can bring that damage. Like I said, you're not going to make it happen on the left side. And then on the counterpoint for Flashpoint, Jumpa's got to be paying attention. Love the itemization into the Jotun's Wrath, understanding that having that ultimate on a lower cooldown is more important than doing the raw damage at this point in the game. That's my personal... I, I really like that choice. Jumpa gets stunned twice. Kraken comes out as well, but he's got beads to dash away. He'll be able to escape that one. Now Matt Coy's on the chase a bit here with Panda Mid and Michael Checo, but no continued chase down that mid lane has learned their lesson about the, the chasing in the duo lane thus far, getting a little bit too out of hand. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think J-Pro is not playing around his character's strengths. You're yeah. never going to, no matter how tanky you are, you're not going to be able to match Nemesis in the late game w with your survivability and, the, and whatnot. Ratatosker is so strong at this exact point in the game, you know, 10 and a half, 12 minutes, where you've got two items, three items, and you can start to really do significant damage. You're kind of throwing that away a little mm. bit by going for the Winged Blade and what is likely to be a Void Shield in that next item slot. I mean, you're you're going to get your prot stripped anyways by by Nemesis. How big of a deal is it to you for you to have protections right. in that spot? Just just try and get the kills off your initial engagement. Kill the Nemesis early. Now our beads are down. This would be an opportunity to go Rat Alt into Kraken. Now Jump Up may survive that because of the lack of damage from J Pro. This is one of those things that. Uh I actually really like about season five, though. I mean, J-Pro is one zero and zero. He got a gank down, right? And, and and we've established that this build in a vacuum isn't isn't terrible. It's the decision making that's so important. J-Pro hasn't done anything wrong, but he's not doing the right things. And I think that distinction is somewhat, I won't say brand new to season five, but it's certainly in the spotlight. The decision making of the jungler is really, really important. You can go 5-0-0 oh, and, oh, and have a bad game as a jungler in Season 5. I think it's really all about the choices you make, and, and this is a prime example of that. And Delny getting control of this lane now as we expected now, once he hits the mid game. Gold Fury pulled here by Fable. Coys and Panda know this is happening. Yeah, not going to really look for that one. Just easy chase out. Panamid low on the mana, though. Got to be careful there as the blue team looks for the oracles. Jumpa shows up and will snatch them away. Fafnir takes a little bit of a bite as well. Kraken comes out on top of Jumpa. J-Pro in the air. Doesn't even need nice help. Job. Mr. Teep just takes advantage of a great situation. Panamid going to fire off that ultimate as well, but it only dings the Fafnir. Has the portal ready for him upon transformation. That's all Mr. Teep there, man. Just understands Jumpa's beads are down. It yeah. takes advantage of it. Well played. Yeah, that, that was great individual prowess. Matt Coy's in some trouble here. Just going to get surrounded, and uh, Fafnir will go ahead and sneak that kill away. Red buff does go to Fable GG, a successful invade. So the, the team, after my own heart, forced the stuff after the stuff. And I, 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 I like that one a lot because I think that's a, that's a kill that you could walk away from and not get anything for. But they forced that red buff invade. I think that's very important to look for anything possible after the kill. And this is the time where the, this team composition is really at its best in the mid lane, at least. I mean, the, the mid jungle are both feeling pretty strong right now as Cyprexa oh. might be able to find this solo kill on a Checo, and he'll do just that. Ouch. Big damage onto the Hachiman, and Checo without his ultimate there, just not respecting the damage yet coming out of Jingwei. I, I, I think some, some of my favorite plays are when you don't get to do your job. There's nothing to analyze there. No. Checo got slapped in the mouth. Yeah. Like, there's nothing else that happened. I mean, you want to break down how Jingwei used her 1-3 combo that everybody knows about? Like, those are some of my favorite plays where you just look at it and go, damn, you got outplayed, kid. <laughs> Pretty much. Checo just has to understand that he can't really be there at that spot. Panamid going to try and seal away the red buff and with help from his ultimate, will do so. Also gives him an escape route to get to safety. <laughs> Take them all. Take them yeah. all. Oh, you missed the portal. That was, a nice, that was a nice play by Panamid. A little bit risky, a little bit uh, 
of a, you can make the argument that there's, it's a waste of a resource there, but he does have 30% CDR to get that through space and time back mm -hmm. up quickly. Plus the Chronos Pendant passive. It's unlikely that Flashpoint will need his ultimate soon, but this is the response from Fable. This is really, really smart. Now Panda Mid is low, no ultimate, has to back, pull the Gold Fury. No vision, no yep. idea, no contest. Fable Egg gets the uh, objective there. It's Fable GG, not Fab Leg, but that'd be funny. Fab Leg is a pretty good name. Matt Coy is going to get wrapped up here. Won't be able to dash, won't be able to live. Mr. Teep, is he free or is he locked up? Because right now he's playing like in, like anybody's business. He's the, he's the jailer right now. He's the one locking <laughs> other people up. Missed ultimate coming out from J-Pro, but the Hunter's still in trouble nonetheless. Guy on the horse is good, but Michael Checo runs into the corner, thinking that he can box with help from Panda Mid, and he can. Nice shot there. Enemy juggler will be cut down by Ryan Jarman. Delny surrounded by three blue jerseys. Here comes Panda Mid. There's the shot. Double un for the PM. Now Delny continuing the chase. Portal is good. Gets nice. a triple kill there for Panda Mid. Jarman trying to force him out. Has to use the thorns, but Cyprexa has already tried to exit. Sprint used by Delny just in case, but Panda Mid realizes he doesn't have the damage to bring down Jarman quite yet. And it all comes back to J-Pro not having enough damage because yeah. that lets uh, Michael Checo survive. It brings Panamid back, gets him his first kill, and then engagement. Then Panamid uses the ultimate to get back into the teeth of the team fight. And that's a great way to use through space and time in a, in a situation like that. As soon as it comes up, that one looks like, nope, just kidding. Jarman can't snatch that one away. Flashpoint still trailing, but making some great moves here. Just won the last team fight. They were previously trailing by about, it looks like almost four or 5,000 gold there. Last team fight winds up putting things in their favor. 2,300, well, not in their favor, excuse me, but the wind is certainly in their sails. The momentum is heading in their direction, and they shorten the lead by about half. And that was the first team fight where Soul Laners got to join, and I think you saw how, how big of an impact Delny was able to make in that team fight, chasing down Mr. Teep was got his purification beads, got the Aegis, and was still able to make sure that Panda Mid could find them. Curious choice from Jarman to go into the the um, basically the uh, Nemean line. line. That's the one I'm looking for. Uh, I, I know that Jump is going to be bringing basic attack damage as well, but I mean, why do you think we see the Nemean line here? I don't think he's really. Kakala doesn't worry too much about CDR because he gets two rotations of abilities in a team fight, ideally, anyways, because of his transformation. And it's just a, it's cheap, good physical protection with a semi relevant passive, even in yeah. this game. Even if Checo isn't going for crit, even if Jumpa isn't going for the auto attack build, it's still relevant damage that you're returning onto the enemy. And he's not worried about the CDR from Breastplate. No other physical protection item really curves that well in the second item slot. Mid Guardian Mail, 40 physical prod. It's a lot of health, but doesn't really give you enough in the way of physical protection against minions and towers and that kind of stuff. It's that you're just kind of looking for something in that silver breastplate tree. If he doesn't want mm. the CDR, Nemean works. Left side being aggressive and nice stun sets up Matt Coys for cracking damage and the title surge, but nice not enough to kill. Beautiful ultimate by Panda Mid there does find the target. And the Fafnir are going to be jumped on here. Here comes Jumpa as well. The ultimate comes out of him and damage, but Delny gets three with the stun. Oh, but he doesn't just stay on the horse to finish the kill because Jumpa is going to blink forward. Use Panda the dashes, Mid. But Panda Mid's got him. Jumpa still safe for the moment. Has to use the purification beads just in case because that's slow. But Jarman zoning out three by himself. Yeah, a couple of heals from the Guan Yu aren't going to be enough with Ryan Jarman local. I love Jarman sticking to this Guan Yu, making sure those heals are less effective. Trouble for Panda does find a way out by way of the portal. Can't say the same for the jungler as Fable GG resurges back in this left side fight. Panda mid going to whiff there, and Ryan Jarman doing a great job of controlling this team fight. Checo's just got to back up, man. He's six levels down to Jarman right now. Can't really do that relevant Leave. damage, but Delny is doing relevant damage on the backside. Dash through three, able to stay alive for the moment. Look at this Guan Yu just juking and weaving. Oh, he's got the horse back up again. He already used this, this team fight. Comes back up, has a ton of uh, CDR right there in the build, and makes use of it. Flashpoint finds their eighth kill. Oh, come on, Panda. You're being silly with that one. <laughs> no, no, nah, I don't think that would have even killed J-Pro It would not necessarily. have? Well, no, he does have Soul Reaver, but it, the proc wasn't available. Would have been close either way. And again, just like before, unlikely that you'll need it in the time where it will be down. So that's uh, not, the end of the, not the end of the world.
That's a shot that you take. That's the that's the the That's the J.R. Smith shot. I was exactly going to say that. I know. That's the the buzzer going into halftime and you just launch the 40 footer because like it doesn't matter. Yeah, but you don't have a cooldown for your shots in the NBA. J.R. Smith certainly doesn't have a cooldown. I for wish he would have a cooldown sometimes. Nah, you got to you got to risk it for the biscuit occasionally in the uh, flashpoint doing that. Trailing by a whole bunch before, right now tying the game up. And with Gold Fury making the, the comeback, respawning him out now, teams are going to look to uh, refresh and re-engage. Panamid has to head back to base, though. He's going to have his ultimate up available soon, but doesn't have the mana, so he's making the use of the farm time. But with that Gold Fury up, Ryan, I think he's got to be a little bit more ready to battle. Yeah, he's got to have enough gold in hand by now to finish a full pen item. He never backed <laughs> after that last team oh, fight, yeah. and now they're heading towards the Gold Fury. This, this is... Really, really bad for Flashpoint. If I'm yep. Fable, I'm taking this fight every time. Half HP on the Gold Fury. Panamid already in trouble, and he's just dead. Needed to back earlier. Greed is not so good for this one. 437 crit. And Jump is able to beads on out of there. No big deal. But the Rat Man just doesn't have the damage to finish that one off. Downey on the front line. Just trying to keep players away from the objective. And he's doing so successfully. But the rest of his team has ran away with their tail between their legs. And Fable GG will start the gold. This is rough, though, still for Fla Fable because they only have a Pestilence as their only anti-heal against a Guan Yu at this stage of the game. There needed to be a Brawlers before this. Ryan Jarman doing a great job. I would say as per usual, he's looked great in this team in this game from lane phase to team fight, Ryan. He really has. And he's kind of carried team fights in my yeah. mind for Fable. But... It's not going to stop Flashpoint from going in. Gold Fury going to be leashed here, and there's trouble as the knock of his good. On to the Hunter. Ryan Jarman trying to deal and keep players away from that Hunter. Mr. Teep with a great zone pool. And now Flashpoint will retreat. They've won the team fight despite not getting any kills. But Ryan Jarman still here and local and has to be paid attention to. Through space and time off Pandemid's respawn will get him closer to this team fight. Didn't hit anybody, though, as J-Pro forced back. He also went back to base and did finish a Divine Ruin. Much needed. Mm -hmm. Now Fable has a much better shot at fighting into this one. Meanwhile, you've got Panamid back in business with the penetration on the shard. I like that look. Also does have himself a Soul Reaver proc. So next person he hits is going to get smoked up. Flashpoint still local and generally healthy. Jumping out a part of this conversation. Neither is Michael Checo. But Gold Fury not pulled by either team. So Flashpoint get what they want. Is it they fought back into this one, they tied the game up. If Fable get that Gold Fury, then they have to do it all over again. Michael Checo is just being bullied right now <laughs> by Ryan Jarman. Look at this. No one is helping Checo anymore. Matt Coys went to help on mid camps instead of continuing to help out his hunter. That'll force out that mounted oh, archery collapse. from Checo. And he's got it back. And Ryan Jarman gonna come through on the backside and force Panamid through a portal. Pulling up the Gold Fury, started by Fable, brought it down to half HP already. Two players seep in, Ryan Jarman coming on back. 10% HP on the objective, going to be leashed out here. Fable GG looking for the fight now. Deldi and Pandamid make it happen one more time. 6-1-0 and zero for the Giannis player on Flashpoint. No Aegis there for Teep, didn't use it, and that's going to cost him dearly now. Another good crit. On to Jumpers, Delny finding two on that backside, but he gets stunned, dashes away, but a huge knockup from Ryan Jarman will bring him down. And again, the last hit came from the Rat, but it was brought to you by Ryan Jarman. Fantastic play from this guy so far. Michael Checo on the run, and well, he's going to get flushed out. Ten kills in total for Fable GG, and finally... Something to put on Jarman's slash line. He was 1-1-2 one, one, and two in a 10-kill total game for his team, but despite the lack of presence on the scoreboard, it's anything but in these team fights. Oh, Jarman's carrying these team he's fights. He's crushing it, He feels it, like single-handedly almost because <laughs> he's keeping everyone away from Mr. Teep and Cyprexa so well. Cyprexa's been positioning very well on the backside. He hasn't taken nearly any damage so far as J-Pro chases down Pandamid and kills him when Panamid had both relics available. That's both mid laners dying with Aegis up, and that's just a bad look for both of them. Unacceptable. Jumpa and Matt Coy is the only Flashpoint players alive. I think you definitely start the Gold Fury here for Fable. They will. And with the cracking up, they can crack it in to confirm, but don't even need it. 57,000 gold. That's 5,000 in the lead for Fable. That, that, that last Gold Fury was absolutely critical for them because Delny was starting to join these team fights and really wreak havoc there. Mr. Teep was falling behind Pandamid, who was getting plenty of kills. 
in these engagements. But this allows Ryan Jarman to continue to stay way ahead in itemization, particularly of Michael Checo, who's got to be the one to answer on the Kukulin. Giannis doesn't kill tanks particularly well. Hachiman's job is to kill the tank here, but he's just too far behind to really do so realistically. Starting the fire giant is a gutsy call. They're really depending on the crit strike damage from their hunter. But Fable GG unable to get that one. Here comes the ultimates, and Cyprex will get the last hit on Delny. Big damage coming out from Mr. Teep there. If you notice from my 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 tone, very uninteresting kill. That was just I, I think Delny was a little bit too far up, playing as a soul laner. But with that said, Ryan, he does keep them off of the fire drain. Look at that damage. Oh my. Gosh. On a check out from Ryan Jarman. Didn't even use the thorns quite yet. He's still going to keep this one going. Checo has to use the ultimate now in response to Ryan Jarman pushing forward. And that's the two diff that's the difference right now between the two soul laners, right? I mean, Delny goes in there, does a lot of work, gets both relics out and the ultimate from Teep, the ultimate from J-Pro, and all that's fine and dandy. But then he dies at the end of the day and doesn't really come that close to killing anybody. It Ryan Jarman shows up in the mid lane, stops the tier one tower from going down and nearly murders Michael Checo for daring to look at it. I mean, th this Kukulin pick has really paid off very well so far for Ryan Jarman. Two very different sides of the warrior world. You see 8,000 healing coming out from Delny. And that's we, a lot. We don't have the stat for how many protections he's stripped, but that's also a huge, huge deal. Delny is there. Yes, his, his ultimate is one of the most damaging ultimates in the game. Believe it or not, that horse can really swing. But Delny is here as a... I'm going to provide some damage, but really strip prots and heal for Jumpa and Panda mid. Michael Checo is part of that conversation on paper. Certainly not in this game behind way too much. But, uh, that, I mean, that, that's the difference in approach. Ryan Jarman's going to be able to do things by himself a little bit more. Delny is going to need a teammate, but when his teammate's there, will be that much more amplified. Well, I'd like to see Delny kind of play more around that, though. I mean, yes. he's been diving the back line like a normal warrior would, where I think that he'd be more impactful peeling for Michael Checo than even Matt Coys would be on the RDO. I'd like to see Delny's, you know, try and strip away those props from Ryan Jarman to allow Michael Checo to actually have some sort of hope at killing this Kukulin. And these are the finer points as Ryan Jarman does whatever the hell he wants behind enemy lines. Pops the thorn, still looking for Michael Checo, now turns around to Panda mid, pushes him out in the Aegis, but still dealing the damage to the mid laner. <laughs> While the rest of Fable do whatever they want behind him. Now Ryan Jarman's going to come behind oh and my potentially stop any escape route. Tier 2 tower will go down here for Fable, and it's just the Jarman show right and, now. And, and I think that Ryan Jarman, players know how to play the call in the intricacies, right? Whereas with the Guan Yu, I think this is why he was last picked. These players have not played him for a while, and so a little bit out of form. Crits on to Matt Coy's Jarman. Going to dash forward, but Downey's on the backside side. Prexa eats the Nem ult as Panda Mid comes Big through damage. and combines with Jumper to bring down Teep. Fafnir runs away. He's on the line. Going to be chasing Cyprexa, his own teammate. Ryan Jarman's still here. Doesn't really have too much of a concern, but with three players and the prop shred, he's got to start thinking about it. Hits coming out from Checo, and it's going to take the whole team. But Ryan Jarman does fall down for the second time this game. He winds up being kill number seven for Panda Mid, who's had a fantastic game so far. The Giannis top player damage on his own team finishes that team fight. Three players standing for Fable, but none of them other Kukulin and Flashpoint feel comfortable in that world. J-Pro doesn't have the ultimate quite yet, but it'll be up soon. There it is. Gets a mantle of Discord stun off as well. Oh, and he's looking for the steal. Big. He's going to jump down. Flashpoint are oh, able close. to get it. Close. Very I don't, close. That's, I don't want to see anybody mock J Pro for that one. That's a that that's a great call. No, I don't mind that call to steal. I mean you're giving up everything for the next fifty seconds anyways because yeah. there's so many towers on the map. I, I don't know that I'd defend them uh, if I'm fable right now. Though I suppose gold still is pretty relevant at this stage of the game. Everyone's at five items, no one quite at six for Flashpoint quite yet. If you give up all of these towers, you will guarantee that Flashpoint hits full build first. Though most of Fable is pretty close to full build in their own right. It, it's a borderline call. I, I certainly don't think it's borderline to try and steal Fire Giant there from for J Pro. I think that's an all in. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Try and steal that. As for the towers, I'd probably like to see Fable give them up. Overall, maybe one tier one tower. Maybe try your hand at the at the first 
tier two tower that Flashpoint tries to go for. If yeah. it doesn't go well, just give them all up. It's not a big deal. I agree. Uh, I want to see an all out because especially with characters like Poseidon and, and the Fafnir, I think you do have an option to play defense, especially with Ryan Jarman being the way that he's been, which shouts to Jarman. You know how excited I get when I see players intelligently building. Look at the way he's played. And look at the Oni Hunter's guard. Love it. That is just that is just understanding the game. Really, really strong stuff. So with those options, I'm with you. All out defense. Pull out ev all of the stops for one tier two. If it doesn't go your way, run. But if it does, take advantage of it. This Oni's is a perfect item for him because, as you mentioned, he's been in the, in the thick of the team fight the entire time, and he's going to get six percent damage mitigation. Whenever he's got three or more enemy gods around him now. A thing I would have liked to see him pick it up earlier. I think the, the biggest benefit of Oni's right now is that it's 1,900 gold. Yeah. It's incredibly cheap. So I don't know how I feel about it being nice. six, six item. I think it does <laughs> lose some effectiveness because 6% goes a lot less uh, it, when the, the damage numbers are going to be big and consistent mm -hmm. overall. But if you can use that in the earlier stages, I think that this is a great third or fourth item for when you're first starting to join team fights. For sure. Out of the solo lane. But I, I still think it's a decent idea here for Ryan Jarman. Understanding the build process, of course. You've got the wing blade, third item for anti nemesis. Oh no. We need anti heal. I have to go into the in, into the pestilence. And then I guess you could have gotten it because I, I think there wasn't a spot to get it till mid guardian mail. Tier one sure. tower being aggressed on. Flashpoint should take this one relatively easily. This is the tier two fight, and we're getting what we wanted. Fable looking for it, and big damage from Cyprexa. The first one to fall will be a Flashpoint member. Matt Coy is very low as well. Delny bringing out big damage, but taking it very low is Guan Yu. He'll be able to heal that one up in just a little bit, but successful defense from Fable GG. I love that call. Jump, uh, no beads for him, and he should be toast here, though he does have a lot of movement speed in the CDR. We'll make sure he gets his dash back in time as well. So smoke a little bit too soon. Jumpa is out of there. And another in another instance where a carry dies with both relics available. Checo had beads and Aegis and got bursted with the crits coming from Cyprexa. You just have to position better than, than that. You have to use your relics better than that. You're not going to win many games when you're dying with relics up. Inexcusable, I think, at this yeah. level. They, they, frankly, these players are better than that. So I, I'm not okay with that right now. Ryan Jarman and his team now playing on the offensive into the Fire Giant. Panamid still has his. Matt Coy's and Dilney still has theirs. A little bit of a lead for Fable still nonetheless. About 2,000 gold still certainly able to fight. Matt Coy as well. Delny charges forward. Jump up, blinks forward as well. Looking for Mr. T. There's the beads. The Whirlpool going to be dropped. And big crit damage. Cyprexa making them hurt. And sending Delny in the other direction. Panamid has been chasing J Pro this entire time. Why not go help the squad? I mean, getting this rat kill is fine and dandy. Seems good, you know, whatever. Oh, that not happens. Not misses. Portal will hit, but beads are available for That's J Pro. Jumpa is coming in. Another oh. miss on Sable Vortex. And uh, J Pro still likely to fall. Got him with uh, that on Sable Vortex. <laughs> but one Ratatosker. Versus winning a team fight by cutting off the escape route with through space and time in the mid lane. I think I'd rather see Panda Mid be focused on the bigger picture. Yeah, I, I, I'm with you on that one. Definitely. It just, it, it's, you know, we didn't get a chance to see these teams a whole lot during the spring split. It was a lot of Elevate, it was a lot of Astral Authority, it was a lot of seeing those guys. And it's very clear to me that even despite the talent that a lot of these teams have, why we didn't see these teams mm -hmm. come to land. They, they are still inexperienced they're they're using their relics poorly they're team fighting a little bit too poorly they aren't focusing correctly these are things that w in the league format give them an opportunity to work on and work on quickly and exactly. i think they will but this week one is going to be a really good uh look back you know when, when we're at week six w and we're watching flashpoint and fable play really really well because i think they have the potential to do that same they're going to go back and look at this week one vod and go yikes <laughs> what were we thinking that was a week yes one vod yes it was weak yes yes weak. A, not weak. strong yes a um i mean yes that is weak one vod mm-hmm yep i already said like that. uh yeah i i, I not understand. not yes. powerful team uh, not strong one yes yeah. but the problem is the the one loses a little bit of its of its you know context whatever you not necessarily because not two weak vods it's one weak vod well we're only one week in they so, could have two weak vods Potentially. Well, it depends on. Th this, is, of course, is the best of three. 
It's true. We might get three separate VODs today, depending on how these teams play. Wait, why wouldn't they all be one VOD? They're the same. They're going back to back to back potentially. Well, VOD means video on demand. You can cut that into three separate matches. You could. You could also be cut into one match. I would much prefer the three separate matches. Would you? Yeah. Because then you can you can fa you can find the starting point. If I just want to start with game number two, you can just click there. Whereas you have to look for it in the bigger one. Yeah, but there's so isn't there something to be uh, said about convenience and just being a, if you want to watch them all consecutively, you don't have to click anything, you don't have to wait for loading times. Anything I think like it's that? much more convenient to have it broken up. Flashpoint thing is convenient to team fight right now because Fable are broken up. Ryan on the left side, Rat on the right, Flashpoint right there in the middle, looking for the tier two. Jumpa kept out of the conversation for now. Mr. Keep wants to make sure he doesn't get flanked. I like that positioning. Do you like that positioning for the mid laner? I don't mind it. I mean, you're Giannis. You've got such good escaped options. And you oh, no, I, I'm talking about the Poseidon playing oh, on the so right he's... side. He's not going to be able to, like, launch the Kraken in the middle of the fight, but he won't get flanked. No, it, it does keep him a little bit safer, for sure. Well, Jarman's going to start everything up here. Relatively low already, though. Flashpoint on the offensive, and a nice knockup. Might turn that around. Fable now getting offensive. J-Pro <laughs> cut down. Cyprexa down for the count. Jump up. Puts number 14 up for Flashpoint. Delny gets number 15. The Tier 2 Tower undoubtedly undoubtedly going to belong to Flashpoint. Nice tie game here, and Flashpoint looking to break this one up. Cyprex has been so big so far for Fable. He's played so well, and then he dies with Beads, Aegis, and all available. Ooh, don't like that cracking out of Mr. Teep, but had to use it before he died. Jump against another one, five, three, and six, with Pan Amid pushing his kill count even further. Ryan, with this mount down, yes, I like this call. Flashpoint going directly for the big man. Titan going to fall down here. Ryan Jarman, the only one to play defense. And honestly, he might have been able to pull it out. But Michael Checo brings him down, and Flashpoint will take game number one. Uh, a little bit a little bit rough on both sides, I'd say. Uh, again, it, la late game team fight, your Jingwei has been doing so much work, playing so well. Yeah. You die with everything up. Uh, just don't really... You just can't have that happen. Uh, Mr. Teep buys Demonic Grip, sixth item. He's not going to be using that Trident Auto Attack that often anyways. I think you can build around that against certain team comps. I don't think that was the team comp to do it against. Too much mobility on the other side. You're not going to be able to lock someone down and consistently slow them with the Gem of Isolation and the Trident. Yeah. Don't like that sixth item selection. I think that lack of damage was shown in that last Kraken. It barely did anything to the, to the members of Flashpoint. Uh, some things that both sides need to clean up going into game two. I would absolutely agree there. That said, that was a really tight one, so I think this absolutely can go the distance. Yeah. Watching these teams, I think they can draft better. Uh, I mean, the Guan Yu wasn't doing Guan Yu things until the hyper late game when you don't really have to think about it. You're just hitting two. You're just hitting two one two one two one all day. But in that mid game, you kind of have to think about how to play Guan. We didn't really see that out of the out of the solo lane. So right. I, I'm a little shaky on that pick, despite how strong he is. You do have to know how to pilot it. And I think that, as you said, in the late game when everyone is grouped automatically, you're kind of forced to play it correctly. Yeah. And that's what happened. I mean, I'm not sure that. Flashpoint's able to end that game without Guan Yu. They might have been a little bit too weak, too poked out, whatever it is. That's where Guan really shines, and I think it did at the end for Delny. But I agree with you. Those mid-game team fights, you want to be sticking closer to your carries, shredding the soul laners, healing your carries up to allow them to kill the soul laners, and then pushing forward after that. We'll see.